Our horse, our race class, is going to provide a common cons, uh, context for each um, of our, our race simulations. So, first of all, we want to make sure that all of our horses get started approximately at the same time, um, so no horse gets an unfair advantage. And we accomplish this in our race class by a method called get ready to race. And we saw how that was invoked moments ago in our horse class. So in this class, you can see a single line of code that inv invokes the object.wait method. And you'll remember that uh, this method is defined by the Java object base class, which every object instance in Java inherits. And the wait method actually accomplishes two things. First, it unlocks the intrinsic lock associated with the object instance. And second, it causes the invoking thread to block until another thread calls the notify or the notify all method on the same object. However, in order to unlock a thread, or I'm, to, in order to unlock a lock, a thread first has to acquire the lock. And so we've seen, already seen that we can accomplish this by making the method itself synchronize. So here we make get ready to race a synchronized method. So the assumption is that every horse thread will call this get ready to race method and um, be quietly waiting there for the starting gun. Well, we can model the starting gun by having a method called start race. And notice this particular method implements a single line of, has a single line of code that simply calls the notify all method. This is the object at notify all. So again, it's a it's one of these um, object methods that all of our objects um, in Java inherit. So notify all simply notifies any threads that are currently waiting on this object instance so that they can now proceed. However, these threads will not actually get scheduled until the thread that invoked the notify all method relinquishes the object's intrinsic lock. Note that the method is synchronized. So you can see start race is synchronized. So when the invoking thread exits, um, any waiting threads can now be uh, scheduled. Um, however, um, since we are synchronized here, when we call notify all, the other threads will be made ready, but they won't actually finish until the thread that invokes start race actually exits from this method itself. And in this case, if there were multiple threads waiting um, on this object instance, Java doesn't guarantee any particular order for us in terms of which of the multiple uh, waiting threads are going to run first. Our final method here on the race object is called cross the finish line. Here we're concerned with keeping track of um, who finishes in what order. So we model this by associating a single integer variable. So we have this rank variable. Um, that we increment each time a horse finishes. And note, um, however, that this actual increment here is not necessarily atomic because it's not in a local variable. So in this case, we um, protect that by making the method itself synchronized. So now this is going to be um, um, atomic. So finally, let's take a look at our main program here. So this is what is going to run when we start the program. And basically, it creates all of our simulation objects and then um, starts the race. So here, we create the race and the water trough objects, and then we pass those on to each of the horse threads that we create subsequently. Since we want to make sure that all four of these um, horse threads are waiting um, on that initial wait, we're actually going to inject a few extra clauses here. So we got these thread that sleeps, just to make sure all these threads have a chance to get created and, and parked on that initial way. And once they're all there, that's the assumption here, we're going to call a race.start race, which causes um, the race to begin. So that's all there is to it. Now let's take a look at um, the simulation actually running. So make this a little bigger. And then I'll simply click my Run button.
Okay, so now you can see our race simulation is running, and as the horses progress around the track, you can see the events output dribbling on the console here. Okay, so here we see that Big Brown has won the roses.